Yo YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to the Jeep and Daily channel. As you can see, we are already sitting in the Jeep. That is because we are going to talk about the pros and cons of having a welded rear. I'm gonna go down to the river and I'm gonna go not do any donuts, maybe. But we're gonna drive in a circle. So just in case you don't know how a welded rear works, the gravel down there will help me explain it a lot better when you can see the tracks but I'm kind of going off of just gonna wing it a little bit with these pros and cons I'm not gonna have like five pros five cons whatever I'm just gonna wing this video and hopefully it turns out well all right so the first thing right off the bat obviously is going to be off-roading so definitely easier on your vehicle off-road also so that would lead me into another pro to having a welded rear is it's going to be a lot easier on your vehicle off-road because you're not going to have to push it and go faster over let's say over a hill climb or over some rocks or through mud or whatever the case may be or wherever you're going where you're suspension are articulating you have your tires spinning at the same speed at all times you're interested to see a little bit how the uh, welded rear helped this Jeep out in particular I would recommend going and checking out my crawling for cops off-road video at Rouse Creek because there were a few times that if I didn't have the welded rear it would not have been as easy on the Jeep I would have definitely had to uh, send it a lot harder now this one could definitely be considered a pro and a con depending on how you drive. So to me I enjoy it, but having a welded rear definitely means your vehicle is going to slide around in the rain a lot more. Um, where I work specifically, so the roads are very slick around where I work, um, so when it rains, with, I don't even have to give the Jeep any more than a quarter throttle when I turn somewhere from a dead stop normally and the rear end goes sideways. Now there is times where if I'm trying to get sideways I do really have to push it and it might come out or it might not come out. So I mean if you like to get sideways it's definitely a lot easier. You don't have to hurt your car or your vehicle as much but if you're someone who just wants the welded rear for the off-roading purpose and you don't know how it's going to act while you're driving, um, I wouldn't say it's too bad. The only thing I can say is that I've never had an issue while driving down the highways or just a regular road like that I am on now with some turns here and there that the welded rear affects the Jeep and it wants to go sideways. It's not bad at all. The Jeep only gets sideways only if you ask it to. Another thing that ties into that is pulling in to a tight space might be more difficult. I don't know if it's just in my head really or if it's actually affecting the Jeep but sometimes I feel like if I go to park somewhere and I have to turn my wheel like all the way to the left or all the way to the right that I definitely feel like the Jeep is getting pushed forward a little more even though I'm turned. So I think since having the welded rear in this, I've only parallel parked maybe twice and I haven't had any issues with trying to parallel park. So if you're welding the rear axle in your daily driver, the tires definitely skip, but I haven't, I personally haven't had any issues with the Jeep doing something I don't want it to do. I can park fine, 
it drives fine. Now, from what I've heard, if the welds in the rear aren't clean and you're going to daily drive it, from what I have been told, you might it might be affected and might cause some vibrations or some unwanted noises. I don't know. I mean, the weld in my rear, I bought it like this, so nobody I know welded the rear, but it seems strong. I've done lots of burnouts. If you haven't seen my burnout video, that was a second gear burnout, but I've done lots of burnouts on stock tires and on 33s. I've gone off road once. I do lots of clutch kicking and drifting. And I, I mean, my Jeep is my daily driver. I drive it to and from work every day. So I haven't had any problems with the rear. It drives smooth, it drives fine. Now something you might want to consider and be cautious about is like I said, both tires on the axle are going to spin at the same speed 100% of the time. So that means if you're turning at a slower speed, you'll definitely be able to notice the inner tire skipping because the outer tire has a farther distance to travel. So as the outer tire is doing its traveling on the outside of your turn, the inner tire has to keep up or is keeping up with that outer tire and making the inner tire skip. So for example, if you're pulling, when I pull into gas pumps, obviously gas stations have the overhead balcony or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and it resolves or, and it gives off a little bit of an echo. So when I'm turning, when you're turning into gas pumps and that inner tire starts to skip, it makes like a screeching tire sound obviously. So under the gas pump, it gets a lot of people's attention. So people look at you like you're weird or like your vehicle's retarded. Us car guys or the vehicle owner who knows their rear is welded, obviously it's not gonna bother them what other people think because it's welded for a reason, it has a purpose and it does its job. But on the other hand, I haven't ran into the issue yet. But I feel like there are some cops out there that if you're turning out of a parking lot and you're turning sharp enough to where your tire is making a screeching sound, I feel like there's cops out there that are going to pull you over and tell you you're driving recklessly, whatever. I haven't ran into the issue yet, but I feel like with a welded rear, it's almost inevitable depending how loud it is or how much attention your vehicle grabs. On to the next con. Now obviously, when your tires screech or when you do a burnout, it eats your tire, the roadway and the friction eats up your tires faster. So with this welded rear, I've never had, on any of my vehicles, I've never had the same set of tires on them for really longer than a year. So I've never really noticed tread wear too much. But if you put two and two together, it only makes sense that a welded rear is going to eat at your eat your tires away faster than an open rear or an LSD or something with a locker, really. So because, as I keep saying, because your tires are spinning at the same speed 100% of the time, the turning and the inner tire is definitely going to be affected. So that's another thing to consider really, is if you don't want to spend money on tires more often than you have to, I wouldn't really recommend welding your rear because it's probably definitely going to eat away at your tires. I've noticed that if I, since my tires are brand new, if you did not know I got these brand new tires, to, I think it's been two weeks I've had them on now. Um, there's definitely like some rock chips from them because depending on the surface of the road it's not always smooth or parking lots aren't always smooth so when you're turning you might get stuck on something or your tire might grab something and rip up the tire a little bit so not only will it eat away your tires faster it'll wear them harder depending on surfaces of the road that you're turning on and stuff all right so i'm rolling up to the spot where I'm gonna demonstrate, or try to demonstrate how the welded rear works a little bit and show you guys really quick. 
Now, hopefully nobody comes over and says anything to me because it's a public park and there's lots of people here, but this is the only spot I know with a gravel area that I can do this in. All right, so we're in this parking lot. There's some older people over there and my Jeep just does not seem, or people just do not seem to like the sound of the Jeep. And they always assume I'm up to no good, but we're still gonna do something anyways. I'm gonna do a circle and stick the camera out the window and try to show you guys something. As you can tell, I started about here. Now this was the inner tire and you can just see that it was skipping rocks up. The outside was doing the same kind of, but not as bad. But you can tell up until the point where I stopped, the Jeep was skipping tire. Now if you come look at the tire also, obviously there's gonna be rocks stuck in here. Um, but you can just tell by looking at the tire that it's got some like skip marks. There's definitely some wear on this on the tires from having the welded rear in it. This tire isn't as bad because this was the outer tire. The inner tire was the one skipping really. But we're gonna get out of here now. That's all I really wanted to show you guys. So let's get back on the road. Actually, I decided before we get back on the road, we're gonna straighten this out. We're gonna do a quick cinematic.
hopefully I still have it saved on the laptop. I'm gonna insert it to the end of this video. But if you guys are new, hit the subscribe button. If this video helped you out, if it didn't help you out, if you got some recommendations, leave it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed, leave a like. I will see you guys next video. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. I will see you guys next time.